It's all happening on a show that's more frightening than the smell of the Donald Trump and the sight of the Boris Johnson. Number 15, an Englishman in from Rob Goldstone. Rob, in the 90s, you moved from where you had been living in Australia to America. Right. And you got involved with the Friars Club and their famous celebrity roasts and some lifetime achievement galas for, for different people. And you also crossed paths with the comedian Jerry Lewis. Oh, I did cross paths with him. So he's a hateful, awful man, but he was a very good comedian and actor, but he's known for being an awful, hateful man. It's not just me saying it. And he hates the press. And if you're the publicist for someone that hates the press, that's a great job. So when he was 85, um, he had a birthday party at the Friars and lots of his acting friends were there. And I had the press and I suppose to spite me because I had the press there, he'd agreed to do a photo. So we had tons of press but he wouldn't face them because as he told me, he hadn't agreed to face them. He just agreed to do the photo. So he stood with his back to the cameras and whatever they were used to. And it's a funny photo anyway, of Jerry Lewis with his back to you. And um, he sat down and uh, the entertainment editor for the Associated Press said to me, he's 85. I would love to talk to him for a few minutes about his birthday, his life, whatever. I thought that was a very fair request, which he would never do anyway, so let's ask. So I went up and I approached him. He was sitting down. He was all excited. He got these gifts from his actor friends. And I said, um, there's a, a journalist who I know very well. He's a very legitimate, very nice journalist. Would like to speak to you for five minutes about your life. And Jerry Lewis stopped in his tracks and said to me, come here and pointed at me. And he said, let me get this right you believe that my life can be summed up in five minutes? And I said, well, obviously not, no. And he goes, but that's what you just said. You said five minutes. And I said, he just needs five minutes to talk about your 85. And he goes, so the publicist, my publicist here, thinks my life can be summed up in five minutes. At which point, you know, that the only thing to do is literally leave. And I just said, okay, if you prefer, you could do an hour with him, but you're not gonna do it anyway. So my question is, would you like to spend five minutes with him? At which point he picked up a salami and threw it at me. To which I said to him, happy birthday and goodbye. And I left. And I always liked it because it's a ridiculous story. About a year later, I was doing a tribute for the fries to Tom Cruise. And it so happened that Tom Cruise and me were in a very tiny anteroom of the kitchen at the Waldorf Astoria. And um, I don't often do this, but I said to him, would you do a selfie with me? And he said, sure, if you tell me that about when Jerry Lewis threw a salami at you. <laughs> and I said, how would you possibly know that? And he said, because I just realized that this was you because my publicist pointed it out and she was there when this happened and she was telling some friends on a boat we were on at the Cannes Film Festival and it sounded funny, will you tell me? So I told him this mad story and he laughed. Tom Cruise has a funny laugh, so he laughed. And then he said, you can take your selfie. And I was a bit starstruck and I couldn't remember how you take a picture on an iPhone. So I pushed a button that was like movie and he laughed and he goes, see, you've now got the shortest movie I ever made. <laughs> and it was funny. <laughs> At seven, Red Handed, the true crime podcast with Hannah and Saruti. Saruti, do you agree with this? I've always thought of podcasting as the punk version of broadcasting. <laughs> do, you, do you get that feeling too? Does, like, can you that, listen to can you listen to regular broadcasting now without thinking, well, this is a joke? Why do they all have to have at ten o'clock in the morning? Guess the year. Why do they all have to do that? You know, this is just, you don't have to do that. Yeah, I think you're so right, and I think uh, I hadn't thought about it like that. But uh, you're completely right. Like, I personally don't really listen to the radio anymore unless I'm in the car with my mum, and she loves listening to Three Counties Radio for some reason. Right. But uh, I think you're right. It is that. 
uh, people just consume media in a very different way now. I yeah. even think if you look at streaming services, but even if you just look at YouTube, they don't have to be high production quality videos that are pulling in millions and millions and millions of views. It's just one person with a webcam talking directly to this audience. And I think the rise of YouTube in that way has really prepped people for a more organic, more authentic, maybe less polished version of what they were used to. Podcasting may have not worked a few years ago when it would have been perhaps deemed as not being high production. And don't get me wrong, I do enjoy a very high produced podcast like the BBC Deliver, uh, like Serial was, like those more serialized long form podcasts. But they don't, uh, there's a reason that they're short, that they are uh, limited series. They're the 10 episodes, I'll listen to them, I'll really respect it. But if you want me listening week in, week out, I need to have a vibe with that host. I need to feel like there is something authentic and real and almost like they become your friend because yeah. that's how I discovered podcasting. I was traveling on my own um, for a, a year and there was only so much music and so many sort of stagnant things that I could listen to like the radio without feeling like I was going crazy. I wanted something to replace the friends maybe that I didn't have because I was traveling solo and that's when I discovered podcasting and I was like, I don't feel at all like I've just been on a 10 hour bus because I just did it with some of my friends in my ears. And I think, yeah, I think the podcasting is the future. Um, but I think the great thing about podcasting is it's not restrictive. So the BBC have their niche, the Guardian doing their thing. You have the high production quality ones that are happening. But at the same time, like I said, there is an, um, we don't have to wait for permission for somebody somewhere in a boardroom to decide, oh, we need more diverse voices. We need this kind of voice. We need this kind of story. If you have a story, you have a voice and you have a laptop, you can make your voice heard. And I think that that's just proof that diverse voices are what people want. Um, and I think that it's a beautiful thing. I think yeah, it's great. I think, I think that's why I, I love think, podcasting. I think particularly in commercial radio, um, the people running it, didn't realize that people want interesting people uh, I'll, yeah. you know I came through radio radio is the commercial radio being a commercial radio disc jockey is the only job in the world and I said this to Jonathan Brandmeier who's a legendary broadcaster in Chicago is it's the only job in the world where you are paid to talk but constantly told to shut up <laughs> they you know the more music less talk thing they they yeah. decided they dis well they got because what happened was they hired a load of people who weren't very interesting people who had not and these people had nothing to say and then they did some research and the listeners the research came back surprise surprise tell them to shut up and just play the music well that shouldn't have been a surprise when you hired yeah. really boring people <laughs> and so radio got this idea that talk is bad and started stripping all the personality out of radio and now radio is like so commercial music radio is so bland the idiots outside bre breakfast radio is still okay but outside breakfast the, the the bland idiots with nothing to say that's why they read so many texts they've got nothing to say themselves they love it when there's a, someone else's opinion they can read out because they never thought of that so it became just so bland and so boring yeah so all these people who said, no, people don't want talk, people don't want talk, people don't want talk. And then Rogan gets a hundred million from Spotify because know, he's an interesting person and he has interesting guests. People exactly. have always wanted to connect with interesting people. And the mistake radio has been making for years as it slowly kills itself is it keeps hiring boring people who do as they're told and don't make any waves. And people don't want that. If people wanted that, podcasting wouldn't exist and you know yeah, you and hannah getting right. really deep into a case you're not just giving out the facts you're giving out your opinions you're debating yeah. different things and it's that's that's what it is and it's a shame radio can't let, see you and hannah should be running a radio station <laughs> and telling these you, well you've proved it you know in two and a half years you're now making money from one show a week 
Whereas these people are trying to make money running. There were more redundancies this week because they can't run a thing that's on the air 24 hours a day and everybody's got access to it. They don't have to find it. With podcasting, there still is a little bit of work to finding it. And they need people like you to show them how it's done because not only have they lost their, they haven't lost their way. They don't know where they're going. They, they've, they've got this medium and they don't know what to do with it.